Hi there, welcome to a special IndyCar edition today on the 29th of February, a day that only actually appears every four years, like Brigadoon. So, on this extra day of 2024, I thought I would tackle a subject which, well, let's face it, we've all complained about for years, um, simply because the British state keeps banging on about it. And the topic, of course, is Scotland's ferries. I wanted to find out exactly what had gone wrong with Scotland's ferry procurement um, system and why it is that it keeps failing and why is it that Scotland's ferries always end up costing far more than they're supposed to, why is it the ships never work properly and who exactly is making the decisions which lead to these disasters in the first place. Now to understand this we have to actually step back from the ferry procurement um, process itself and look at the broader uh, political picture in Scotland. Now, as we all know, we have the Holyrood Parliament, which was started, uh, reopened, reconvened in 1999 uh, amid a great fanfare by the then Labour politician, um, who was it, was it the last time? Well, anyway, the, the Labour politicians of the day um, trumpeted this as a major success story for Scotland. And everyone thought that the Scottish Parliament was going to do great things. And we all had high expectations, and how have we been disappointed over the last few years? But why is it that we can't seem to order a simple ferry or two ferries and have them produced at the cost of the contract on time? That's the, the question. What is wrong with Scotland that it can't get this right? The British state likes to think, or likes us to imagine, that this is all the fault of the SNP government. And, of course, the word government is a very broad term which the British state uses to describe the entirety of Holyrood, including, incidentally, the civil service. Now, in the United Kingdom, the civil service is responsible for bringing into effect whatever policies are created by Westminster. Politicians do not decide on things like bridges and tunnels and their designs or who should get the contracts or anything else. That's decided by civil servants in London. Now that model of civil service has also been sell taped onto Holyrood. What this means is that the Scottish government, in inverted commas, is often a term used to conflate not the SNP government, not the ministers who make decisions generally about what Scotland should do, but it also is used as a term to include the British Civil Service acting in Scotland on behalf of Westminster to action the decisions made by Scottish ministers. Now this sounds complicated, but basically what this means is that the civil service in Scotland is colonial. It's controlled from London. The decision-making processes involved in procuring um, ferries for what is the largest ferry market in the world. Scotland has more ferries procured uh, by its government than almost anybody else on, on the planet because we have so many islands and so many remote um, communities spread all around our coastline and they all need absolutely reliable ferries. Ferries that are strong enough and fast enough and efficient enough to do the job properly. So why doesn't that happen? Well, you can only conclude that the reason is that the civil service in Scotland is deciding what these designs should be, not the politicians. I am indebted to Barhead Boy, who produced a podcast recently with three invited guests to discuss this exact same matter. Every single one of them was an expert in some part of this equation. Um, first of all, there was um, Professor Alf Baird, who is a professor of maritime affairs. He specialises in um, civilian shipping and it's broad, in its broadest sense. And then we have um, Lloyd Quinn, an SNP member, very famous uh, man in his own right as a weather forecaster initially in his earlier career, but also as a strong proponent of Scotland's shipbuilding industry. And finally, um, Stuart Ballantyne. Now, Stuart Ballantyne, for those of you who don't know him, is a Glasgow-born naval architect, a man who designs ships for a living. And he specialised and even invented the whole concept of large catamaran 
ferries, catamaran ferries, or ferries which have two hulls linked together to form a very large stable platform. And he pioneered the use of um, hardened steel hulls with aluminium superstructure, making the ferries very strong, very, very light, and extraordinarily efficient, and able to travel at much greater speeds than a traditional ferry, and with greater efficiency, something like 60% more efficient in fuel terms than a conventional ferry. Now, the reason I mention Stuart Ballantyne is that you may have heard his name linked to the ferry contracts over the last few years. In fact, Stuart Ballantyne has um, told Barhead Boy in his interview that he has been coming to Scotland every year since 2008, when he first came to Scotland to propose that ferries that should be built in Scotland could be done as um, catamaran ferries built by Scottish Yards under licence to his company which operates from Australia. And his company sells ferries around the world. They have hundreds of customers all across island nations and archipelagos across the planet, has a superb reputation for design and efficiency. And his catamarans, although there are many types of them for specific purposes, are basically established, proven, reliable designs which can be mass produced. And the mass production of ships of this type is what makes them so cheap and affordable. And not only did Stuart Ballantyne come over every year offering his services for free, pretty much, most recently, last year, he did the same thing. He came over to Scotland and offered for free his services to arrange for catamaran ferries, specifically pitched at exactly the conditions that Scottish ferries face, to be built in Scottish commercial shipyards under licence. Now, this would be an out-of-the-box design, an established design much cheaper than what has been produced by Ferguson's to date. Now you might be thinking, well, what, why did the civil service not think, well, we could save a bit of money and get this job done more efficiently, have faster, more efficient ferries. And to be fair, Stuart Ballantyne's firm actually owns a ferry company, I believe, in Orkney and runs catamaran ferries in some of the roughest seas that you could imagine. So there is no question that his designs are seaworthy and safe. They are, and they're extremely fast and efficient. So why did the British Civil Service not do that? Well, that's the question, isn't it? That's the massive dissonance in this situation. Why take the entirely wrong approach to ordering a ship? So instead of ordering ships or having them built here in Scotland under license from an established, well-proven design which has a high performance, low cost, high efficiency, why go for what is effectively a prototype of a new ship designed by a completely different set of architects? And believe it or not, this is the fourth naval architecture firm that has been involved in these contracts under the United Kingdom Civil Service acting for the Scottish Government. The ferries that were actually designed, the ones which have cost so much and taken so long to produce, are far too heavy. They have a massive overcapacity in passengers for the routes that they currently run. The routes apparently require only accommodation for 300 passengers and crew. Instead of that, the new ferries have a capacity of 1,000 passengers way, way more than is ever going to be needed by these ferries. They're also massively too heavy, and their displacement, that is the amount of water that they move out of the way as they sail, is enormous, so they're very, very inefficient, heavy, over-designed, over um, experimental ships. They're, they're not established designs. Every time a ship is ordered in this way, it's a brand new uh, experimental design. These are prototypes. These aren't established designs at all. And that is why they fail all the time, because they're trying things out. Now, why would you do that if you had the best interests of the people of Scotland and ferry customers at heart? Well, you wouldn't. You just wouldn't. So the only conclusion that you can draw from this is that the decision-making process, which is carried out by the British Civil Service acting in, La in Edinburgh, supposedly on behalf of the Scottish Government and claiming to be part of the Scottish Government has deliberately um, deliberately had ships designed which they knew would be too big, too heavy, too expensive, too experimental and far too costly. Why would they do that? 
Well, because these civil servants acting uh, in their capacity in the same way that they would do in the British serv civil service in London don't care whether these ships run massive cost overruns, whether they don't arrive in time. In fact, if they don't arrive in time and they cost too much, it benefits their political masters in London because it makes Scotland look bad and it gives the British state a stick to beat the SNP with and say, well, the Scottish government is useless at procuring ships and ferries. So we are suffering from a colonised civil service. The civil service in Scotland is not Scottish. It is British. The Parliament at Edinburgh is also British. It's an offshoot of the British state. The nominally SNP government tries its best to do what it can, but it does not have the decision-making power to, say, hire Stuart Ballantyne's company to provide these ferries at the best possible price from established designs that would work every single time and would cost far less to run. Stuart Ballantyne, uh, Alf Baird, Strathclyde University and many other experts in the field of Scottish naval um, architecture and, and marine business generally held a meeting at Strathclyde University. It was a seminar. They invited the Scottish Government, the Scottish Civil Service, they invited CMAL, the company which the Civil Service created to order these massively expensive and unnecessarily experimental ships to this meeting to show them just why these catamaran ferries would be so much better for Scotland, how they could be built more quickly, and how they would produce a steady stream of income for shipyards such as Ferguson's. Instead of that, all of the government ministers, all of the government uh, civil servants failed to attend. They refused to come. And all attempts by Stuart Ballantyne to offer his services to help the Scottish Government to procure and build these ships have been blanked, completely ignored, in favour of the idea of building ferries which are going to cost too much and bankrupt the actual shipyard which is building them. And this is why companies like Ferguson's keep going bust. Because when you build experimental ships like this, when they don't work, nobody wants to buy anything from you, your order book dries up, and everyone is made redundant. And that also suits the purposes, the political purposes, of the British Civil Service acting in Edinburgh on behalf of the British state. Now, you've heard me criticising the British state for its dreadful procurement and the design, most recently, of its warships, particularly the two aircraft carriers which keep breaking down, the various uh, military ships whose engines overheated because somebody forgot to remember that the sea temperature is sometimes a bit warmer in the Mediterranean. So we know that the British state's uh, civil service is rubbish at procuring military ships. Why should we expect them to be any better at procuring ferries for Scotland? So in the round, uh, and looking at and listening to the interviews carried out by Barhead Boy on his podcast with these three men, it became very obvious that the problem was not with the Scottish Government, not with the SNP and not with the Greens and not with anybody else associated uh, with the ministerial post in Scotland at all. They were being forced to ask the civil service to carry out their wishes, and it's the civil service which screwed this up. And I would lay a large bet that the reason why it was screwed up was not because the British Civil Service is incompetent, but simply because A, it doesn't care whether these ships arrive on time or whether they cost hundreds of millions of pounds instead of 68 million. They don't care because it suits the purpose. These civil servants are hoping to get jobs in the civil service in London. They're looking at their careers, they're looking at preferment, they're looking at getting knighthoods or damehoods, they're looking at becoming lords or ladies at the end of their illustrious British careers, keeping the unruly Scottish shipyards um, from making any profits and making the SNP government look as stupid as possible. So the problem we have is not with shipbuilding and it's not with our government. The problem we have is with the civil service that's been forced upon us by London. And as long as that goes on, there is no way we can build ships at cost for our public service ferry operator, which needs them, and needs them urgently, and needs them to be reliable, fast, uh, safe, and also extremely efficient. I have to add here at this point that Stuart Ballantyne's catamaran designs used on this um, ferry route 
to Orkney have proved themselves over and over and in fact have won awards um, for being extremely green. They've won awards for environmental concept. They're very efficient. They use less fuel. They make less pollution. They travel faster. They're more stable, etc., etc. The advantages are limitless. And yet, we're not allowed to order our ships from Stuart Ballantyne's company at any price, no matter how cheap it might be. So what is needed here is for, at Holyrood elections, for whichever parties are running in the Holyrood elections in 2026, for that government to fire the entire current civil service at Edinburgh and reinstate them with people without political connections, with no links to the British civil service and with no ambitions to be preferred in London or to be rewarded for holding up Scotland's ferry industries in the way that they currently are. So I think it's not often I do a specialised programme like this, but when I when I watched this series of interviews all the way through with Barhead Boy, I began to realise that this ferry business is far more complex than the British state would like you to believe. And essentially, the problem is the civil service at Edinburgh is predominantly unionist. It's predominantly run by a man who has zero interest in making good ferries and saving money or making it look as if the Scottish government itself, and I'm talking about the politicians here, has the ability to make good decisions and to support a local shipyard which would then generate future orders from other ferry companies around the world as well as here in Scotland. So, like everything else in the Scottish Parliament, it is polluted with unionism it has gatekeepers inserted in various high positions to prevent Scottish shipbuilding, civil shipbuilding, from succeeding. At every cut and turn, the Scottish shipyards, the Scottish shipbuilding industry is undermined from the south to prevent us from actually doing what we're good at, which is producing excellent engineering, which works, is reliable, is cheap, and everyone else around the planet wants to buy it. But then again, if we did that, the British government would look pretty stupid. And that is one of the things that civil service um, workers do not want to have because it makes their career prospects look a lot more shaky. Anyway, that's it from IndyCar today. I hope you find this um, rather more in-depth look at the problems of Scotland's ferries uh, to be a bit enlightening. But just remember, when you're thinking about what I've said today, it's time that the politicians in Holyrood got a grip and actually grabbed the civil servants by the scruff of the neck and basically rattled their cage and said, look, why are you making these stupid decisions? You're fired. You're costing this government money that it can't afford. We're sacking you and we're going to replace you with somebody who will do the job properly. There is no actual, um, as far as I know, the Scottish powers that it has, its devolved administration, requires a civil service. But it doesn't say where those civil servants have to have their allegiance. And it's very obvious from the way things are going that the allegiance of the civil servants concerned with ferries are very suspect indeed. Anyway, that's it from IndyCar today. Um, I hopefully will see you again in the next few days. In the meantime, please keep supporting the channel. Um, I'm always in need of more donations. This kind of content takes a while to research and put together. And obviously it cost me a bit of time to do that in my working week. So I appreciate everyone who supports the channel in any way at all. Um, in the meantime, as I said, keep the faith. But remember, if we want to change things, we need to lean on our politicians to grow a spine and actually start sacking some of these civil servants who are so rubbish at their jobs that it beggars belief. And the only way that they, or the only reason why they would make decisions like this is not because they're stupid, but because it's politically motivated by London. See you soon. Bye for now.